Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct the sixth lecture of this course. And the topic of today's lecture is data registers, pointers, registers, and index register. So let's proceed to our topic. So we are going to start our lecture with the data registers. And these are shown in this diagram. These are four registers which are present in microprocessors. So these are internal registers and these are known as data registers. They are basically general purpose registers, a general purpose in a sense because it is used for any type of data manipulation or any, da any data which is being used during the execution of instructions. Those can be stored uh, in these general purpose registers whenever they are required. Furthermore, they are 16 bit registers uh, and namely AX, VX, CX, DX. So they are those are 16 bit register as we are uh, considering 16 bit microprocessors. So these internal registers are also 16 bit registers. Uh, since they are used to uh, used for data, that's why they are known as data registers. Uh, or one can also define them. They are kind of temporary storage place uh, where instructions or informations are stored uh, on temporary basis, of course, while program is already in execution. So during the program execution, when things are happening, uh, instructions are decoding and executing during that if some kind of information or data is to be supposed to be manipulated uh, in any pattern uh, so those data will be stored in these uh, data registers okay so we learned the basic definition or the basic intro to this data register uh, but uh, let's proceed to some of the important characteristics or types uh, where the data can be uh, can be can be stored in these data registers. So, data register can be used as two different type uh, can be used as a storage place for two different type of uh, information, and those are known as source operand and destination operand. This is quite interesting concept. Uh, what is source and what is destination operand? Uh, for example, uh, just to understand this uh, thing, let's consider we have a memory. I'm just showing you three different slots of memory, and here we have certain information. For example, here we have certain information, and here we have also certain information, and during uh, during the execution of program one come to know or microprocessor come to know that uh, these two places are supposed to be added and addition of these two place will should be stored here in this memory so for example that's our zero slot that's our one slot I'm just giving it a random address it's not exactly micro processors 8086 or 8088 my uh, memory but uh, we have three different slots uh, which are addressed as 0 1 and 2 furthermore we know that uh, 0 and 1 slot have certain informations uh, and those are supposed to add and once they are added results result is supposed to store in slot number 2 so when what is uh, source operand and what is the, uh, the uh, destination operand? The concept we are going to learn. Uh, so, this zero slot information and this one slot information is supposed to fetch inside the inside the microprocessor, and then microprocessor is supposed to add them once he knows that uh, instruction says to add them. So, these two informations which are coming inside uh, which are coming inside uh, uh, microprocessor are known as source operand or uh, operand is supposed to be an operator uh, or or particle which is uh, providing uh, 
uh, which which is providing the base to the operation for example if we don't have any number to add so what we are what addition actually means it nothing so operation requires operands to operate so uh, source operand refers to the data which is coming from the memory and once those data are uh, inside the memory so you have already access to different information from zero and one slot and they are right now in the microprocessor and now uh, microprocessor node um, knows uh, that uh, he is supposed to add them and once he execute the instruction he knows that okay result has been uh, evaluated now that result is supposed to store somewhere and that is your destination operand the destination operand refers to the information which is supposed to be the result or which is supposed to be uh, the uh, supposed to send somewhere outside the microprocessor that can be your output device that can be your memory but uh, right now we are learning with the memory so uh, data registers can be used as source operand and as well as destination operand but that was the concept of source operand and the destination operand right now we are going to learn that how this data register can be source operand or can be destination operand for example that was the example of just uh, memory now let's consider instead of memory we have uh, data register and they do have certain information for example ax has a value of uh, let's say 1 2 3 4 in hex similarly bx has information 1 1 0 0 hex so now microprocessor knows that he is supposed to add ax and bx so right now it is not fetching information from the memory rather these data registers are used as source operand so whatever the value of ax and the bx will be added in this case these are the four, one two three four and one one zero so both of these values are what source operand and what from where they are coming they are coming from data register that's why data register can be used as source operand and similarly data register can be used as a destination operand for example once microprocessor added them then result will be uh, uh, 4 3 3 and 2 right so this will be result and once this result is evaluated then microprocessor come to know okay this is supposed to store somewhere in data register let's say cx is the position so this time this value will go inside this register so that means uh, C, uh, data register in this case it's specifically CX can be used as a destination operand so data register can be used as uh, in different operation as source operand or destination operand what comes to next operand can be okay that's that's the thing that I have already explained that operand can be fetched from the memory before the execution of any operation as and as in the last example I explained that how different memories slots will be accessed and those can be used as source operand and furthermore those information can be stored within the microprocessor so can be stored in these data data registers as well so operand can be fetched from the memory before the execution of program okay and then performing data operation using register instead of accessing memory okay that's an interesting fact we have already gone through the, uh, the example but uh, we will focus what's the essence of this point is so if we were supposed to fetch information from okay let me draw some where it is yeah here so that's the external memory somewhere outside the uh, microprocessor so if we are supposed to fetch information from these memory it will take certain time so rather performing uh, rather accessing information from uh, or rather performing operation on those information which are stored somewhere in the memory we can uh, we can fetch them in the data register and once these are those, those information that are present in data register uh, the overall speed of operation will increase so it will make the operation faster so that is very important concept of data register that's why microprocessor performs uh, at a higher rate uh, compared to the uh, memory if he is going to perform the same result in the memory he, he will take more time but if he, it is the memory which is 
somewhere inside the microprocessor which is here in this case data register so data register is also kind of memory because a storage place so it be, it makes the overall operation faster okay in this slide we are going to learn some special names for uh, data register which are associated uh, according to various uh, characteristics of these data register so data register are also known with specific name due to their special functions what are those special functions for example ax is also known as accumulator bx is also known as uh, base register cx is also known as counter register dx is also known as data register so these are four general purpose registers and they are known as uh, with the specific names uh, rather saying a b c d we can call them accumulator base register counter register and data register furthermore in this table uh, one can observe there there are some specific titles uh, which are given to them or which are, there are some specific function for example a word multiplication a word divide it associated with ax and similarly byte multiplication byte divide byte input output operation such operations are associated with al and so on so these are some important concepts which we will be learning when we are going to deal with certain instructions involving those operations like multiplication addition string operations and so on uh, c is also uh, c is uh, equal to the number of bytes used in a string operation that is why it is known as counter register in certain string operations when uh, microprocessor is interested to know the number of bytes which are involved in a string operation then uh, a c register or the cx register uh, helps the microprocessor because it contains the number of bytes which are going to use in that particular string operation that's why cx is known as a counter register cx uh, is also known uh, is also used in loop instructions for example if one is going to track the number of loop how many time number of uh, how many time loop is going to repeat that is also stored in the cx register that is why it is also known as counter register furthermore if we talk about ax or al all kind of input output operation whenever uh, you are bringing some information from in some in input device or you are sending some information towards the output device then you are going to deal with al or ax register if it is the 8 bit of information then we are going to deal with al what is al i'm going to explain it here but uh, uh, if it is 16 bit microprocess a uh, 16 bit operation then ax is going to involve okay in this slide we are going to learn that these 16 bit registers which are ax vx cx and dx can also be used as uh, two 8-bit register. For example, AX can be broken into AH and AL. H and L indicate high and low byte of 16 bits uh, information. Similarly, BX can be broken into two different parts, which each of which uh, is known as uh, a BH and BL, and both of them have capacity of 8-bit individually. Similarly, this uh, thing also applicable to CX and DX register. So each of the register can be used as 8-bit register as well and similarly they can also be used as 16-bit uh, register. So if one is interested in 16-bit operation then 16-bit uh, operation uh, then uh, AX, VX, CX and DX all four of them uh, can be used uh, as a unique identity but if uh, any instruction requires only 8-bit of information then uh, what can we do or a programmer have a choice to use any of the lower or higher place of lower and higher byte of these registers so x denotes a word that is why x is written here where uh, that's why ax ax means full word of information word means 16 bit information bx a word information cx a word information and similarly dx is also uh, 16 bit information but H denotes a high byte as I explained earlier and L denotes a low byte so in uh, in this slide we learned that how different uh, kind of uh, uh, how different uh, kinds of information uh, can be used or whenever uh, the length of the information is concerned in 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 these registers okay in this slide we are learning a very important fact about these higher and lower byte of registers 
uh, it says if contents of AH is modified, then AL remains same or vice versa. That means, for example, if you have information written in, uh, let me use the marker. Yeah, if we have information uh, in AX, one, two, three, four hex, right? These are this is in hexadecimal. Uh, four bit of information, four, three, again four bit of information, two, again four bit of information, and one is also four bit of information. So in total, these are 16 bit of information, and they can they are basically stored. This one two is stored somewhere. Okay, just let me raise it here yeah. okay and let me use a different color yeah okay this one two is stored here in ah and this three four is stored here in al so if uh, we are at this stage that, that is the initial stage of this register and if at this stage any instruction is going to execute and uh, in result of that instruction uh, the content of AL is modified. For example, it was earlier 34. Now it has become what? Let's say it becomes 32 or 32 hertz. So will it also affect AH? No. The content, the value of AH will remain 1 to hertz. That means in, uh, if, uh, if one is going to ask what is the overall information stored in AX register, then you can answer, okay, that is 1, 2, 3, 2 hex. But if one is going to ask that if is uh, AH is also get affected, no, the value of AH remains same, that is 1, 2 hex and AL is 3, 2 hex. So that is important fact about these data registers. So if one is going to modify the lower byte of any of these registers, it is not going to affect the higher byte of uh, any of these register. Uh, and that is also true in the opposite case. Uh, what? How does it help? Actually, it provides more efficient use of limited resources. We don't have millions of registers inside 8086. We have only four general purpose registers which can be used for data manipulation. So we have very limited resources. So in case of limited resources, we are using them more efficiently. Rather, if we are going to disturb only 8 bit of information, so other 8 bit information is preserved. So that is why this whole analogy is uh, responsible for uh, responsible for efficient use of limited uh, resources. So that is important advantage of uh, this property. These register, okay, that's another important fact. These registers are not only responsible to storing the uh, in data they can also use to store the addresses because address at the end this is also a data what is address address is uh, any information for example it can be a number so a number is again is a data so that these data register can also store some the uh, addresses and those are uh, there are some specific uh, addressing modes that we are going to learn in addressing mode lecture but uh, in certain addressing modes uh, these registers hold some addresses. So uh, some of the address can be base address as we have learned in segmentation. There is something called base address and there is something called offset. So base address can be stored somewhere in these data register. And similarly, some input output address. If you remember, we have seen input output address also uh, in the software model. We are going to further investigate this topic in coming lectures as well but uh, those io addresses can also be stored as source operand or destination operand in these data registers so that's it about this slide okay now we are going to deal with the next part of our lecture that is pointer and index register along with those data registers we have certain uh, some other uh, internal register, those are not data register, Th rather those are known as pointer registers and index register. Specifically, this stake pointer and this base pointer, these two registers are known as pointer register and this source index and destination index, these are also two internal register, they are also known, they are known as index register. So, 
other four general purpose register their length is also 16 bit same as data registers but these are not data register rather they are pointer and index register so two pointer register what are those and two index registers uh, as i explained two index registers means uh, source index and destination index and two pointer register means stack pointer and the base pointer what information they hold they hold certain information which is known as offset we are going to learn this concept in detail but uh, whatever the information they are storing is basically an offset okay in this slide we are going to talk about uh, about offset what is an offset address and how it is important uh, from a programming point of view so we see here a segment uh, this is the point where segment ends and this is the point where segment starts that's why i have written here that size of uh, this segment is 64 kilobyte we have earlier learned that the maximum size of a segment is 64 kilobyte and we know that the starting address this is the starting slot and this the address of this starting address is known as base address right base address or the segment value which is stored in the segment register right 16 bit register we have learned about these register code segment register data segment register stake segment register or extra segment register so this base address is stored in segment register similarly uh, that is the starting address but we never work only on the address start uh, on the starting address we have to work in the uh, letters uh, letter uh, bytes of information we may uh, fetch certain information from the above bytes of this segment so this is this base address is just tracking the start of the segment but uh, if uh, user is interested to know the very recent or the very last byte which is stored in the particular uh, segment then that thing is known as offset so that this segment is filled up to this point right this segment is filled up to this point uh, we can see these number of slots are already filled but this is the slot which is the next slot which is kind of empty or it is the last uh, the, it is the location where the next information is going to store that is the offset so base address is like you have a, a address of or the address of the segment itself but offset you have address within that segment so these are two important things it's like an, it's like in home address you know where your home is in which town so you go to that town but you must need to know what is a street number to go to the specific house so that is your offset address so base address is just address of the whole segment rather offset address is the address of the specific location within that segment so that is important thing and offset information is always present in index register and the pointer register that's why offset information are important so thus these pointer and index registers are also important okay in this slide we are specifically going to talk about pointer register and what are those pointer register okay these uh, these are uh, stake pointer and the base pointer so we are just going to discuss about these two pointers a stack pointer stack pointer offset is for stake segment of course as its name suggests that it is the pointer for the stake segment remember stake segment register contains only the base address for the stake segment but offset address of a stake segment where it will be stored in the stake pointer so to access the storage of a stake segment we need what stake pointer whenever one is going to interest it to fetch the information or when whenever one is interested to fetch the information from the stake segment then uh, he has to know uh, the stake pointer value so whatever what are those uh, uh, how those information is generated we are going to learn when we are going to talk about stake but we know the offset value of stake is stored in stake pointer similarly stake pointers offset what is offset it is the last word stored in the stake we know uh, once we are uh, we know that uh, the memory segment which is stake segment it is going to fill with certain bytes right so the last byte or the last word as we are talking about 16-bit processor so last word stored in the stack that will be pointed by 
uh, stake pointers this thing will become much more clear when we are going to deal with the stake itself and those uh, definitions these are, right now we are just covering certain definitions right but when we are going to apply those definitions in programming and stake itself then we will exploring the real meaning of those things right so top of the stack top of the stack means up to the point where stack is filled right up the point in the stack up to which stack is filled is known as the top of stack and that can be pointed by two different registers what are those register the segment base address will be stored in the segment register and the pointer and the, or the offset value will be stored in the offset so these two values will be used in uh, uh, accessing the information from the state segment now come to the base pointer what is base pointer base pointer is also used for a stake segment but in a very specific addressing mode mode that is known as base addressing mode so whenever we are talking uh, whenever we are going to access information from the stake but using this addressing mode then we are going to use base pointer uh, instead of stake pointer so the value will be pointed by this logical address stake pointer and base pointer you see the difference there we use stake fragment and the stake pointer but in address in in base addressing mode we are going to use this information stake pointer uh, sorry stake segment and base pointer so in this slide we are going to talk about only index register and those are source index and the destination index so very first point it says in the holds information uh, which is offset addresses for data segment and extra segment if you remember data segment and extra segment both of these are used for data so whenever we are concerned with the data so uh, we will deal with these data segment and extra segment so uh, we know that that base segment addresses will be stored in data segment register and extra segment register but if we want to know uh, offset addresses for these data segment and extra segment then the information will be fine here right or will be found here uh, used in an addressing uh, index addressing mode yeah this is an important addressing mode we are going to learn about this specific uh, index addressing mode when we are going to deal with addressing modes itself but right now we must know that these two registers which are index register they are very much important when we are going to deal with index register source index and destination index source index and the destination in index is a important concept which must uh, which must be known in this specific addressing mode but we know that these two are index register and they store offset information so in case of source index offset of source operand we have already learned source operand and destination operand during this lecture so we are going to deal with source uh, we are going to say that offset of source operand then we are going to deal with source index and if we are talking about offset of destination operand then we are going to deal with destination index these are just uh, as i told you earlier these are just definitions of these registers uh, what are their functions and how they are useful in uh, programming itself we are going to learn them when we are uh, going to start the programming 8086 or 8088 microprocessor that's it from this lecture if you have any query uh, about this lecture please note them down and we are going to deal with them in question answer session